Good morning, everyone. As you all are aware, I'm doing what I'm able to in restoring as much peace of mind as possible with Christine. A detail that I was aware of has come to my attention. I shall explain. It appears that the analysts who had blocked Christine had concern over a misunderstanding and interpretation of what she had tweeted as early as August 2018. And, of course, the hater commentary encouraging these misinterpretations. The misinterpretations had led to the assumption of malicious intent, and that was never ever the case with Christine. I have looked on her old Twitter, it ends at September 11th, 2018. So, I checked on the Quaki, they chronicle as much as possible from Christine's online details. From my recollection, and likelihood of which, I would vouch that her ants and emotions, from after being blocked the first time, would have been misconstrued to appear malicious, when it was never the case. In C197, in the actual cold town of Equestria, I had personally talked with Dr. Wolf and Firebrand in November of 2018 to allow Christine, her projected self, to participate temporarily as the Red Spy until when the chronicled Red Spy to be, hash B-R-I-T-I-S-H-N-I-N-J-A, became revealed. The following April. Christine had trained hard in the art of stealth and combat, while limiting her powers, so she doesn't easily overpower the others. It made for fun boss mode days, her in her CPU form against everyone else in their all forms. Christine drew a little something to celebrate this, while also having tweeted of some of her accomplishments there and then. She took artist liberty, and taking into account the respawn generator there, of making her lightning dagger look, like it took out someone on the field. This was never meant to convey any malicious intent for real at any time off of the battlefield in Cold Town, nor during times outside of the scheduled missions and battles on the field. Christine is an energetic, enthusiastic, kind and loyal individual to a fault. She has apologized to the analysts before, but in light of this, a new apology directly from her is indeed required. I shall talk with her after she returns from Quatville later today. As much as I abhor advertising the Gwiki, I do encourage the analysts to read the past of Christine's tweets from as early as August 2018 for themselves to reevaluate their past assumptions. That is all. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I had another awesome day in Gwatville. My physical training with this body has greatly improved. I'm getting more stronger and mentally able every moment. Who? What a rush. Anyway, Meiji Chan has brought to my attention that there was indeed a misunderstanding that was behind some of those few analysts who had blocked me months ago. Cutting to the chase, so, yeah, the likes of hash LIGHTNINGBLISS, hash MADMUNCHKIN, possibly even hash JASPERPIE, among others. They all feared me. They were afraid I was going to have some sort of murderous or malicious intent or mincer in their direction. And I realized that also could be misunderstood from the drawing I made of myself in my sonnet you form on active red spy duty, while I was on the actual team in Cold Town with Dr. Wolf and the others. When I drew that, I had absolutely no malicious intent in mind at all, the only thing on my mind at the time was being happy to be part of the team for real, and I was feeling so excited and all fired up and all that. And, yes, the respawn generator works there, so I got to work on my stealth movements and tactics with no long term casualties, and in good teamwork and combat fun. But, I digress. I reiterate, initially and fully, I have no conscious or subconscious intention on harming, hurting, or anything malicious upon anyone. I would never have any intentions of hurting people that I like, people who are innocent and kind, people who have families. I'm like most of you all who feel the same way, as well as in saving the combat work for self-defense, and taking out those who have caused bunches of hurt on me or anyone else, in Osana, kind and those I care about. I have heart. Anyhow, to hash LIGHTNINGBLISS, hash MADMUNCHKIN. Hash J A S P E R P I E, hash F I E R Y J O K E R, hash E L I Y O R A, hash S E G A S I S T E R, and anyone else who had this as part of the reasons in blocking me about a year or so ago. 
I deeply apologize for anything and everything that I have said and done before that made you all feel like seeing me as of malicious intent or the like. That is not me at all. And I was able to show that to some of your Loverbrinicon weekend. I will not repeat myself on the matter ever again, and I promise not to be all spammy and annoyance, or whatever. I only pray that you all take my more recent actions, my own tweets and comments, separate from the online haters and bullies, and what else in general. I pray you all at least consider and reavailate and unblock me on Twitter. All of you have such strong hearts, souls, and personalities, each of you, it truly is nothing but or inspiring in all directions. I like you all, as the good people that you are, and I'm a fan of. Your respective works and docs. My intentions will always be kind and good. My intentions will always be supportive. My heart and soul are in the right place, and all of my chakras are very much aligned. And I pray the next time we get the chance, to meet up again at another pony convention, or something, it will be on mutual good vibes, and without any misconstrued fears and bad blood. I pray for y'all's health, safety and being. Continue to do your best, all of you. Thank you. Everyone, I have an announcement, and this will likely shock a lot of you, while making the haters want to feel like cheapening it in their own meaningless defense. Christine and I had literally switched bodies on the morning of August 14, 2019. In this semi-permanent phenomenon, I have been using her hands and body as my own, while she has been on the C-197 side of the curtain in my body making great efforts on her part as well. Over the past few days, I have been sharing my wisdoms and insight and offering my views as I would normally, except I finally get to speak to all of you people of 1218's Earth. I have recorded a video and uploaded it with the same announcement, and showing my charming personality in heavy highlight. In this example, this definitely proves. Without a doubt our ordeals are indeed fact between both dimensions. Thank you. Yep. Apparently the highest liked and talked about topic for today is our body switching day nearly a week ago. Such a phenomenon in real time events does make for a hot topic. Anyway. Thank you all for your continued kindness and support. Good day everyone. It is I, Magichan Sonichu. I have taken possession of Christine's body as we have swapped bodies. Her soul is in my body as you can see right behind me on the opposite side of the dimension curtain. I'm recording this today as definitely backed up by Christine's second phone. It's August the 15th. Which, on that note, should be the day I have uploaded this video originally, long before I made it public. You could definitely tell that it is I versus as opposed to Christine. Not only in the vocal tones, but also my behavioral patterns. The dimension merge continues to progress. An event will happen very soon where my body fully comes into this 1218 dimension. And I will be swapped back with Christine. And everything will definitely further progress from there. It is quite different being in a human body. As opposed to my science body. Especially in the brain. My brain works a lot better. This brain, it needs work. But I am working on it. I am improving. Well, that aside anyway, 
Still working on it. She's got power. I'm helping her find it. And she's borrowing my power too. She'll be making the journey very soon to progress everything there is. We will all be able to see and coexist with each other very soon. At least at this point, my wisdom, intuition, and other thoughts are able to be shared in this realm. So take that as you will. Be good. Be safe. Be kind and take care of each other. To every one of Earth 1218, all genuine sorcerers, magicians and powerful psychics, please, open your minds, hearts and souls. This is a call to you all around the world. Our time is now. I'm presently binge listening to Gino's comprehensive history series on YouTube, just finished part 4. It brought back a lot of recall to me. On Christine's behalf, and I will retweet this onto her Twitter feed as well, just for the record and Megan's reference. Christine had watched Sailor Moon, when it was on Toonami in the late 1990s, she had enjoyed it from start to when Chibi Yusa met her tea hosting friend, viewed on the last day in the Partindale Circle House, before moving back to Rockersville. And Christine was a fan of My Little Pony G1 and G2 when they both were airing on the Disney Channel in the late 80s and early 90s, she was unable to get merchandise for either at the times, but she did enjoy the shows very much. In other words, Christine had enjoyed the media, that she had stated to Megan, that she had enjoyed long before the two of them ever met, period. The only thing, that Christine picked up new interest in from Megan was the Soul Calibur and Tekanok, Yoshimitsu. And even then, despite his Robin Hood personality type, Christine was mildly put off a little bit from his appearance. That is all. Thank you. The events with Idea Guy were fated to happen, rather I warned Christine or now, and this set of events had a greater purpose, awaken Christine to her powers and fullest potential as a goddess. Follow me please. Long before October of 2017, I had become more present and obvious to Christine. This was evident, after she finally came out as a trans woman in July of 2014. I was slowly gaining more, and more ability to better and directly communicate with her. I had appeared beside her. I offered guidance and input. This was a time I had to warm up to her to fully grasp that I was there, tangibly, the whole time as her guardian. I was better able to make it so before BrinnyCon of 2017, when she and I, months before, started having meditation sessions. Before her bedtime, we also accessed her stat boosting for Cayman attacks, such as charge, agility, and bulk up, there were plenty others in the nightly queue as well. And, I had become even more obvious by finally getting to dance with Christine for the very first time. At the Grand Galloping Gala during Brunicon of 2017. I had not yet professed my love for her, she was under her own assumption that she was teaching me to swing dance for and with Sylvana Rossichu. I was already hitched with Mutuo and Sylvana at the time. Back to the idea guy saga, involving his Ock, the former guild soldier, Johnson Wiles, who had informed Christine that October in 2018 that her at SEGA. Dreamcast was indeed special, this was true fact, as it is this world's counterpart to the spiral console, Sega Dreamcast. That had held the CPU, you zoom in it. 
Not to repeat the whole story, as it is chronicled in Christine's book 13, Awakening of a CPU. But I was there as it happened, and I guided her to plug her dream cast in, turn it on and place her hand on it, absorbing the powers of the spiral seal, and a part of Uzum, that was later reunited with her, from within it. What followed in the months was many a revelation and epiphany to Christine of her powers and abilities, as she had written and drawn in that book. In the end, I required temporarily possessing our friend and ally, as my body was unavailable at the time, to inform Christine via direct text message that she had the power to undo idea guy's carnage and chaos, including his mind control and manipulation over the CPUs and gamma industry, including Megan Scroder's counterpart there, who became the CPU Red Heart by promotion, that remained fact, regardless of idea guy's input. And so Christine had undone his malicious efforts in C197, I returned to my fully restored body, and she continued to become more aware and developing in her powers, abilities, and skills. We have taken little assistance from any trolls, past and present, since she regained her senses. And with our fated nuptials into our lovely polyamorous ship of five, she no longer has been prone to any new ship sagas with, with anyone. Although our relationship is an open one, we still maintain our reservations, and have been in better guidance. Finally, as for the exposing videos, despite the few of them being suggested by one that was under idea guy's manipulations at the time, I saw it as opportunity to really show myself, and Grizzle Ross at you off to the world, and in a way, that was played on the past leaked footage. To make it indubitably clear and obvious that Christine was finally fully taken and married, and that our love for each other in our partnership was truly mutual. Yes, I, in part, have my own reservations on the leaking of the private footage, but for the greater good. It had to be done. And I humbly and respectfully ask everyone and all of you to please, never ever bring up those videos to mine or anyone's attention. And any and all of those private sexual videos involving Christine never to be used again in any future documentary of her. At all, please. Not counting such documentary videos that before today, the 28th of August, 2019, have cited them in part, the damage is done, and I just assume leave that. That is all. Be safe and well. Thank you. To everyone, I just typed all of this up, and I feel all of you should read it. But, sufficient to state, I, may I chance on it you, have a heart and a soul. I care about Christine down to my very essence, I have been, since long before she was even born. I realize and empathize how frustrating it is, to not have Christine fully here, believe me, I miss her in Mutuo as well. But we still check and telepathically, and the energy flow between her and I, back and forth has continued to be consistent and very good. My wisdom and guidance during these times to those who are listening and working with us, here in 1218, continues to be required, as I, not so much Christine, am better able to answer the deeper detailed questions that have plagued the minds these months and years, albeit about the merge, or the ship between her and I. Thad to answer very deep in regard to the idea guy's input during those months, as well as those few sex videos. I have seen into the alternate timelines, when I foresaw these events long before. In one, where Christine had never been called gay, or any of the LGBTQ adjectives, amongst the negatives, she did come out a lot sooner, and she was able to have a clear and calm mind and ascend and make her way into C197 a lot sooner, with the ability to go back and forth. Fully, of course. But, come October, 2017, she still had not become a CPU yet, and she still encountered Johnson Wiles, the Cito face, listened, and still found the spiral seal that way. And she still, had to fight Rie Wrights, Akon, Monica, the Nazis, and all that, but she knew of her ether that she had, and undid those events without having to ask for help from my dear guys Ock or his mind manipulated allies. And she still ended up finding Scarlet's soul in her Commodore 64 no sooner than around the end of April, 2018. The point was she never had the negative experiences of that, which was considered the worst of what she had perceived as mislabelings. 
even in an alternate timeline, where she was never cyber bullied at all, she had my guidance, wisdom, and communication a lot easier as early as 2005. She listened and developed a lot sooner her ability to discern the bullies and liars from amongst everyone she talked with. Again, she ascended sooner. And Johnson and Idea Guy still came around in October, 2017, but she had foreseen and saw again through the deception, but realized and accepted the benefits and played along, still finding the spiral seal, and while encountering the villains and Nazis, she overpowered them easily. And still no sooner than late April, 2018, finding Scarlet. The point being in those timelines, where it was easier from the beginning, she never had to develop herself the tough and hard way, she became more Mary Sue-like, but no matter the timeline or alt dimension, she could never be practically perfect, because of her autism. In this timeline, it was the toughest, she listened to me off camera, and when she was not heavy in aggression against her foes. I was unable to get through to her when her mind was as determined and set as it was, as seen in a lot of those old videos of hers. She ended up out of control at times, I became upset in my own right, especially every time she called herself straight, when she was bisexual the whole time, and every single time she gay shamed in general, and with those bible verses. Oh, my freaking gosh. I shed lots of tears during those moments, when she recorded herself doing that. Every time, I reminded myself of what I had foreseen, counted the blessings, recollected the present events, and double checked where we were likely to go from there. It remained consistent, that she and I ended up married in the polyamorous ship with Crizzle, Sylvana and Mutuo. And more crucial, it remained consistent, that I foresaw myself confessing my love for her, and she reciprocated very kindly and passionately. I had the obligation to keep the events on track as best as possible, and to do my best to rail the events back into the path they had to be in, to end up in her preparations towards the final inevitable of the dimension merge, and our battles against our foes, as well as freaking Jacoba. You may call me cruel to allow her to do what she did over the years before now, but it really could not be helped. And in the end, in the best possible way, she developed herself, came around, we are together, and we are doing this. And you must note, I sincerely did not want her to suffer as she did, I suffered each time she did. I feel better, now that we are in the more positive places and outcomes, and I felt better, when she finally came out in 2014 as a trans woman. I feel awesome every time she felt genuinely content Hanny and she smiled. I, may I chance on at you, have a heart and a soul. I care about Christine down to my very essence, I have been. Looking out for Christine is one of my cherished responsibilities, and I'm more than content, humbled and honored to do it, and continue doing so. And I also care for everyone else, including those that Christine cares about and for. She has a very large powerful soul, and a big compassionate heart. That is all. Thank you. Christine was always bisexual, but in her younger years, due to pressure from her parents and the expectations of the adults, as well as her insecurities and naivete at the time, she never really had thought of trying to establish such fellowships. She was stuck in the just friends mindset for the long time. Intelligent as she was in stillies, her mental age was younger than her present physical age. Her hormones and attraction remained platonic and pure, like as if she was still 12, even though she was teenage during high school. The teenage angst and further horniness, despite her exploring on the Skinner Max during the late 1990s, did not really strike hot, until when she turned 21. So, it still took the further time, to bring her mindset into adult levels. I encourage empathy in this, as when you do ponder over it, it is quite similar to any TV drama, live action is animated, that depicts a teenager in the adult situations and settings, but in the aspect of only just getting by, while remaining employed as the head of a major company, not to be taken literally. But, I digress. In short, the reason why Christine did not think of dating anyone way back then was, because she was more occupied with her education, studies, life, and her hobbies. Can I get an engrossed twilight reading a book, Jif here?
had some lunch at hash c-o-u-n-t-r-y-c-o-o-k-i-n with Crizzle and Barbara today. I did as Christine used to do, and make a Chris Chan special. A combination of shredded cheese, boiled egg chunks, bacon bits and croutons, she used to make this for herself every visit to the restaurant.